I'm really excited for season two because of the response from season one. Uh, it, it was just so cool to see how much everyone really enjoyed it and really how much fun we had putting, to, putting it together. Uh, my excitement for season two is exponentially larger than last year. You know, last year you guys called me and said, hey, you want to do this? November. I mean, we were filming a week after you guys called me. Last year I was only part of it a little bit and this year really going after it for the full season I think is super exciting. We weren't really prepared or nothing like this. We're gonna have a lot longer to fish. Um, we got the whole winter. Griff and I cleared our schedules. Bart just planned on this as being his, you know, focus and so we're uh dude we're we're pretty jacked up this is a really special series it's a really special area and it's just fun to document something that that's really unique i think you know just given the opportunity to really come in and and give some of what i know as part of this too i mean we all fish together and it's a super good time but at the end of the day there's a lot of stuff that we all teach each other too and we want to show you that so i just think this year we're set way better than we are were last year. We're ready to get after it. We've been checking ice. We found some lakes that have ice, so yeah. There are such big crappies in this Twin Cities metro area and is consistently overlooked by everybody. And I think telling that story is really why I'm so excited for season two is just really showcasing what the metro has. When anglers think of trophy fisheries and dream destinations, most think of untouched locations far away from civilization, but not us. Located within 60 miles of downtown Minneapolis is a mecca of crappie fishing opportunities. These waters are home to the biggest crappies across the ice belt, and maybe even the Midwest. Our goal is simple, to document the catch and release of as many trophy caliber crappies as possible in one ice season. Along the way, we hope to educate you on how to catch the biggest crappie of your life. Joining me again this season, two of the best ice fishermen in the country, Adam Griffith and Matt Waldron. With the help of wild game cook, Brian Pinkala, we will also show you new and creative ways to prepare fish like you've never seen before. The ice season is here and we're ready to rock. Welcome back. This is season two of the Crappie Chronicles. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Um, welcome back. Ignore my neighbor's dog. It barks 24-7. Welcome back to another episode of the Crappie Chronicles. Um, I'm your host, Adam Bartusik, and we are back in the Twin Cities. We got a ton of snow uh, basically a week ago today, and then like two days ago, we had tornado warnings go through here. But it dumped a ton of rain, and everything locked right up so we're ready to go we're ready to get after it um, the whole basis of this series is staying within 60 miles of the Twin Cities area and targeting some of the biggest crappies anyone's ever seen because we know they live here this is a world-class fishery and first ice is here and man I can't wait to get after it so I need to go meet Waldo and Griff today is Friday December I'll, fl I'll flash up what day it is below because I, I don't know the date. I've been too busy. Uh, but Pinkala's working. It's a Friday. We're going to be able to get out to the lakes before everyone else does for one more day. And it's time to get a giant. And also, if you haven't bought any holiday gifts of the Crappy Chronicles merch, please do. But now, it's time to chase some giants. Okay, we are out here, out on ice in the metro. Um, this ice is actually much clearer than we anticipated. 
I figured it'd be pretty foggy from the melt off and refreeze and it actually seems like it rained straight down to the main layer and then just refroze. So it is pretty clear, but uh, we're gonna work around, see how skittish these fish are and try to get after it. We're on a lake that has got some of the biggest crappies like you will ever see in it. So hopefully we get a chance to interact with one of them. They tend to only eat in the first week before it starts getting pretty loud out here and other people start showing up. We're the first ones out on the lake, first ones drilling holes, so hopefully we get an opportunity. I'm starting out with a good old clam drop kick jig. One of our absolute favorites for crappies. There we go. Got him! There we go. We're getting bigger already. That's a good sign. Waldo just finished up drilling holes and uh, I was just chilling here and <clears throat> had a mark come through on the bottom drop down. He disappeared. I was actually jigging pretty quickly and he went away. So I slowed down my jigging cadence and he actually just flew up after it. So good little piece of info I think we may have learned. Got to dig slow apparently for that one anyways. Got him. This is world record small. Oh, it's a perch. That's why. Not not the desired species. I don't think he was actually what I marked though. Okay, quick change of plans. Um, we gotta adapt. That's what we have to do for these big ones. But uh, this ice, it's just way too glare. They're way too skittish. We need some more ice here. Um, but we'll be back, that's fine. Just good to check out the conditions. But now, kind of like last year, we're faced with, we need to go to some rivers. Uh, those fish tend to not care as much about the thin ice and a little bit of noise. So we're gonna go have some fun with those fish. new location like we said um, we had to bail on that lake the ice is just too clear and those lake fish are extremely extremely finicky with noise and presence and shadows and at just everything early ice so instead of trying to push a bite there's so many great opportunities within 60 miles of uh, Minneapolis we got to some uh, river backwaters locked up good to go got three and a half to four inches out here and now we hop around to try to find these aggressive uh, river dwellers and this is where sometimes some of those absolute mules come from so we're gonna get after it start hopping around feels like a giant bluegill really? it's fighting like one but i don't think it is shaking his head a lot like you know how they do it like you can just feel him little Larry guy they're back Ooh, there's some higher ones Big crappie. Well, we just got out here, new spot, um, found some good ice, and again, they're hiding under this gray stuff as usual. Um, but yeah, that's the first one we got so far since we've been here. I'm gonna get her back, cause it's a little cold out here, so. Off she goes. That was awesome. Just on a pink and gold pinhead is all I was using, no bait. Just pounding it as hard as I could and just Boom, when they hit it, I mean, it's just, I got a bass right before that and they just knocked the crap out of it. So, looks like it's typical backwaters, pound it hard and get ready for the, just the hammer to be dropped on it.
Holy sh Absolute giant gill. Just got this beautiful, beautiful bull bluegill. That one actually came on a pinhead minnow. Right there, nice little pinhead minnow. That's actually a Dakota Angler limited edition color chartreuse wonder bread pinhead minnow. Um, I just wanted to use something really bright. You know, we're kind of fishing stained water back here in the backwaters. Here, I'm gonna let this guy go quick. That is a beautiful, beautiful bull bluegill. Come on, buddy. Perfect. Okay. Well, one thing we kind of found is we peppered holes in this area. Our, one of our buddies, Matt Milbrandt, was out here. And, uh, yeah, we're, uh, we're whacking and stacking and, you know, enjoying a fun bite. Uh, Griff got a nice crappie. We just got a nice bluegill. I actually went back to back on bluegills. Uh, but we found what we found is there's uh, a lot of gray ice right here and it seems like they're having a harder time seeing us and for whatever reason they're just pretty attracted to it whether it's shade or whatever it may be um but yeah we're gonna keep you know fishing aggressive we're fishing spoons right now just because these fish don't seem like they're very finicky so um you know more hooks are better so trying to you know just get on a good bite and uh yeah it's going pretty well right now I think he wanted it. Just a little pinhead. Choke city. Well, they're getting bigger. Um, that's what now the third one. We got one good one, a little one, and now this guy. Um, yeah, I don't want to keep them out very long, but I would say probably a 12 and a half, 13 inch fish. But again, just pounding it as hard as you can. We're under the gray ice still. Um, we kind of found an area that they seem to be they seem to want this particular patch because we've all been marking fish pretty heavily. And uh, when they come in, you just keep pounding it. And that rod just, you just this is the bite, I mean. Just, <laughs> there's no doubt about it. You're like, oh, I, got, I think I got one. No, these rivers are cool, man. Just fishing these fish in these, what is it, seven feet of water? Yeah. That's so much fun. Because they're just, they got fight, they got so much heart too when you hook them that because they, they're right there, you know, they really have nowhere to go. So they just, I mean, they just try to get to the bottom and they're, you know, you try to fight, fight them to get away from it. But they're definitely not as high, though, in the water column as last year. Like, they're within two feet of the bottom. Like, last year they were right up under the ice. Just, I mean, you literally couldn't even see your jig half the time. But it seems that's true. We were in a little shallower. So, um, yeah, I'm sure later on tonight we're going to start seeing them actually rise up in the water column. We'll probably see them three, four feet off the bottom. But right now it's still pretty early. What is it, like two o'clock? Yeah, so I was thinking the next hour they're really gonna turn on. Covering water column, like I always talk about cadence. It's all I'm doing is just covering the water column. It's only seven feet, so you really don't have to lift it that high. But you're just trying to, these fish, I think they're just cruising. If you can get them to see it, they'll come over and, and nail it. Well, they just missed one. That's a nice one. Perfect. That one came on the black drop kick with the white Mackie Mackie. Now, see how my line is on the forward part of the eye? I need to uh, bring that back down. It's a 1 16th ounce drop kick, so it's big and it's easy to tight line with. And that one, uh, not quite a bit of slack in my line, so I'd be, uh, I'd be pretty surprised if I would have missed that one again. But hopefully, he's got a couple more Roman buddies with him. So it's our uh, first full day on the ice in the metro. Um, this morning was pretty rough. Uh, we found a lot of fish, but you would literally get on them, drop the vexler down there, and they'd be gone. Um, super clear ice, though. So, um, so we may we did plan B and uh, went to the backwaters, 
and it started off really good. I mean, we caught some really nice fish, some nice bluegills, nice crappies, and then uh, something changed where the, the weather changed and they absolutely just shut off. Um, couldn't even get hardly bit. You'd mark them, but you wouldn't even catch them. Um, so tomorrow we're gonna do this again. Um, we're gonna go to a place that last year, we, it really went off at this time of the year. So um, we're gonna go check that out. And uh, those fish are more there to eat because it's current based. Like the one we were on today really wasn't a lot of current in it. So uh, I think these fish just kind of live here and meander around. And uh, when they're off, they're off, you know. And in the, in the actual current system, I think those fish will um, be more apt to bite even with that massive storm that we had that kind of screwed everything up. I think these fish just don't know which way to go. Yeah. I mean, it was ice, open ice, you know, thunderstorm. 70 mile an hour winds. Yeah, 70 mile an hour winds. <laughs> and, just absolute craziness. There's dirt so. all over the ice too from yeah. people like driving on this dirt road over here. I right. mean, it blew. From it, yeah, it blew like crazy. So yeah, um, yeah, we're just gonna go and get after it again tomorrow. So we'll see what happens. It doesn't seem like any of the lakes we want to fish are really ready. So like last year, we're gonna go attack some backwaters, and today we're going back to uh, where it really went down last year. There is just enough ice on the river, and um, yeah, today we're gonna really we're gonna try to smash them because we're getting kind of tired of playing the patient game here. So we're gonna go swing for it. on a little bit of a channel swing again this year. Just five feet of water. Um, just looking for current breaks and eddies. Figure out where these crappies are cycling through. I just got, they're just like this on my graph. They won't do it. No. They'll come right like this one came right up to it. Right like this one came right up to it. There was one on the bottom. I dropped down and as I'm dropping down, this one just went whoop. Got you that time, sucker. Had to do the little down jigging. Are we keeping? Yeah, we're gonna keep a few. That's a perfect one right there. Probably about a 10 and a half, 11 incher. Oh, hello. Where'd you come from? Slave city. Oh, look at that copy. Oh, son. Oh, Metro Megas coming at you. Oh, you're a crappie. There we go. I'm on the board. He just came in and absolutely crushed it. I barely ever even marked him. It has been much more finicky to start out here, but that's kind of the way the bite's been everywhere we've been so far this year. But that guy will eat. Pink will cook some food with him that we'll show you eventually. All right. Nice guy, about, uh, I don't know, nine and a half maybe. Keep that guy. Got him right in the bottom lip. Ha. Well, there's a couple more down there, so I'm gonna get back down right away, see if I can pop another one. Seems like when the school rolls through, they are bitey. You just gotta keep the bluegills off. All right, let's get back down. All right, just caught this one. It's like a 12 incher, super thick. Nice fish, but he came up literally a foot underneath the ice, right up, set the hook, and he pretty much came right out of the hole. <laughs> I'm gonna get that one back. We're looking for an absolute freak. That's a nice fish though, but uh, let's get an absolute giant next. Oh God. Thank <laughs> you. 
and like right below the ice. My line was caught on my rod tip. And this thing came out of nowhere and just destroyed it. Look at that right there. That would be the three millimeter drop XL, a little bit larger hook. Stuck him absolutely perfect. Griff just got a Griff just got a big one too. You booty. Here we go. Things are happening. Griff and I just got double bombs. It's cold out, so we're not gonna keep them out too long. Heck yeah. Nice job, Easy. buddy. These are a little bit bigger than what we want to keep, so we're gonna let both of these guys go. Swim another day. Bye. And do some breeding. Um, yeah. So actually I got that one on Griff's rod. Yep, that's um, what I'm using too. I absolutely love it. That was super cool. That fish came in right below the ice and I mean, I wasn't paying attention. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it in GoPro, but my line was actually wrapped around that stupid spring tip I put on. These boys, so I got a late start today, not going to lie. Um, but they were saying they were catching them on black and white. So I went and they were saying they're a little bit, you know, finicky. So I put on a three mil. Uh, this would be a drop XL with a white spiky Mackie plastic from Clam. And... Uh, yeah, it did the trick. That fish came unglued, but it seems like black and white's yep. the deal today. Yeah, I'm using the same thing with uh, Mackie Mackie, though. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. just a little more appendages, bigger yep. bait. Yep. Figure more bulk with these bigger fish. so they'll, A little bit dirtier water, too, right. you know. Give them something to see. Yep, exactly, but we're going to get back after it here. It, uh, things are happening. <laughs> Come on. They wonder why they don't catch that many. Eat it. Huh? I had my hand on him too. No. I did everything right too. He was right under the ice. I set the hook. He came right into the hole like Waldo's did. <laughs> no. Yeah, I literally looked over there and I just oh, that hurts so really bad. I wouldn't have dove my whole arm in there if it wasn't. You're like scooping at the bottom. Dude, I had him in my hand and when I grabbed him, I like pushed him down enough that he turned. So he got it, you, like he wasn't, there wasn't enough ice for him to actually be stuck. I like got my hand on him and, oh, no. I'm sorry. That was such a I'm big sorry. Crappie. Oh. That hurts so bad. Well, we've kind of figured out this year, actually, compared to last year when we were here, is there is a ton of shad in here this year. And because of that, where we were fishing last year in like four to six feet, um, there's just too much shad. And it seems like the crappies don't want to be there. So where we are now is actually even closer to the bank, up in that three, two to three foot range. And we're actually fishing like just below the ice and that seems where most of our crappies seem to be coming through. Um, so when you're fishing river systems, like obviously shad in the area is a good thing, but there can be too much shad in a particular area. So you kind of want to avoid that and get to where uh, your bait will be kind of the dominant thing they want to eat compared to competing with the shad because you're, you're not going to win that battle. Fine, mate. Another nice eater. Ooh, there's a pretty good one. That one's got a big forehead on it. Just caught this guy, really nice one. I think my biggest one of the day, I'd say. But I just had a bunch come through and I just raised it up. I was jigging like probably a foot underneath the ice and he just slowly came up and the spring bobber just went, Oop. And I set the hook and he literally was on top of the ice instantly. <laughs> but 
Um, I'm gonna release this one. I'll get them back right away. It is super cold out. So um, this has actually been kind of cool because we do have like six inches of ice, which hasn't been the case in most of the places we've checked out. It's been like less than four inches, which we thought was gonna be um, improving with the weather that we did get. But now that it's getting really cold, the ice is gonna start getting really good. So I think the early ice kind of window might be coming to where we're gonna start getting some pretty substantial ice and uh, we'll be able to get on pretty much anywhere we want. But right now, we're still limited to kind of what our options are, but this turned out to be a pretty good one so far. And I still got fish down there right now, so I'm just gonna keep jigging and see if we can pop an absolute freak. So, there we go. Whew. We got another one. He just came in and absolutely obliterated it. Another good eater. Um, I actually just made a bit of a jig change. I went to a 1 16th ounce size just to have a bit bigger of a hook. Um, we're keeping a couple fish, you know, those 10 to 11, maybe a 12 inches. So Ryan has some stuff to cook, but it's good to see they're starting to, it seems like they're starting to eat better than they were this morning. There's also a lot less people out now, so I think the quiet has really helped and uh yeah we're making some adjustments and just getting after it there's another one come here another good eater i just dropped right back down there's one okay same deal just like a foot under the ice came up just popped and my spring barber just started sagging like he didn't crack it really hard he just grabbed it and started sinking down which you see how deep they have it it's just down his throat there's a giant giant oh yeah baby that So I just caught this freaking bomb. I had a bunch of them come in and this one just slowly raised up. He ate maybe a foot below the ice, same deal. And his mouth just came up. Look at that giant mouth on this thing. And he was just rolling in the hole and I got him out. But let's see how big he is. So right, where are we at? My hands are frozen, 14 and a half and just Thick mama, look at the back on that thing. Super nice fish. I'm gonna get him back right away. The fins are starting to ice up. We don't want them to freeze, but that's a bomb crappie. Absolute slab. All right, Whew, my hands are frozen. But that was super cool in the shallow water. I caught him on this rod. This is Bart's Chronicle rod right here and super parabolic rod. It bends like crazy. So like when I hooked that fish, it was able to load up and I was able to hold him right at the bottom of the ice so I was able to get him out. And uh, this rod is pretty freaking sweet for crappies, I'm not gonna lie. It's good for everything, but the way it loads up really gives you a chance to fight those fish in this really shallow water. So if you haven't checked out our rod series, definitely do it. We have some really cool rods and they're all quite different. So you kind of have something for every application depending on what you're into. But that Bart's Chronicle one is a super good crappie rod, kind of an all around ice deal. There we go. There was no hesitation on that. My mark got bigger. I actually decided to say, do what Pink's doing and go bigger, go home, and brought out the 1 16th ounce drop XL with the two inch Kytec. <laughs> and it friggin' worked. Looks just like a shad. I don't know. That one's a good eater. That was what, 11? Had to force feed him. Down jigging. I'm like, oh, hey, didn't see you there. Got another one down there. Two more. Down jiggies. So I've been doing uh, 
little thing we like to do called down jigging. Um, you kind of just put it right in their face, but you do it super slowly. Um, you don't want to race it right into their face, but you just kind of slowly work down in the column. And uh, sometimes when they're neutral biting, they'll actually, um, it's kind of like it gets in their zone and they just kind of got to, ooh, I just missed another one. Um, they just got to eat it. They got to eat it or let it go. is kind of a wrap on our first time getting out around the metro just chasing fish through the ice really it's it's been really hard to find safe ice we're getting some colder temps finally so things are going to start firming firming up and we're going to be able to get out a lot more places but can't complain getting on a lake kind of chasing some around and then having to get to some river backwaters to really actually get after it this metro area is just so capable of producing freaks and uh, we're off to a good start this year Pinkala got a really big one uh, Griff and I had a couple opportunities today at some really big fish and you know unfortunately they come unglued the shallow water can be pretty tough uh, for that but we are out now we're out chasing we got a lot more water and a lot more bites to get after, so until next time, we are on to the next one. Yeah.